Today what we have here are two laptops from ASUS. They are both running the latest Core i7-1165 G7 with the new Tiger Lake architecture but they are both operating at completely different wattages. So this is the ZenBook Flip S UX371, a thin and light ultrabook laptop that runs at only 15 watts max. Whereas this one is the, I would say, unreleased VivoBook S15 S533 EA. But it is operating at a maximum of 28 watts. So in this video, we're going to compare between the differences in terms of performance of these two laptops here, even though they are both using the exact same chip. Now, before we get into the benchmarks, we first have to clarify a few things. So firstly, these two laptops are not meant to be compared side by side. They are two aimed towards completely different types of users. But what I'm trying to achieve in this video here is just look at the difference in terms of performance while it's operating at 15 watts and also 28 watts. Because remember, Tiger Lake chips can operate at a maximum of 28 watts, specifically for the Core i7-1165 G7 that is found in both of these laptops. And the way we can find out its maximum operating wattage is by stress testing it both CPU and GPU on IDA64 and then monitoring the CPU package power on HWinfo. And secondly, the specs of these two laptops are actually very similar to each other. So they are both running the Intel Core i7-1165 G7 as mentioned and they both also have 16 gigs of system RAM and also one terabyte of SSD and the RAM part is the most important because it means from what I understand is that the GPU side, the Iris XE will have a total of 8 gigs worth of VRAM. And thirdly, the VivoBook has something called AIPT which stands for ASUS Intelligent Performance Technology and uh, honestly, I don't really know what it does because even on ASUS's website, it kind of just describes what's the my ASUS utility doing in terms of selecting the power profile and whatnot. Um, there's no way to actually disable or enable AIPT to find out what's going on. But um, since we don't really know what's going on with the AIPT, let's start off with some of the synthetic benchmarks first. And we are testing with this version of the driver here and on this version of Windows 10. They are both exactly the same because I've updated them at this point in time. And by looking at the synthetic benchmarks here, the laptop with AIPT, which is the VivoBook operating at 28 watts, somehow got a lower score in most of the benchmarks there. I'm not too sure what's going on, but the only one benchmarks, no, two benchmarks that the VivoBook with the 28 watt operating wattage is better is Cinebench R20 in terms of single core and also multi core, uh, which is to be expected. So we can't really get anything out of this. And since synthetic benchmarks aren't the true representation of day to day usage, let's jump into some games and we'll start off with Fortnite. So on the 15 watt version of the Intel Core i7 1165 G7, we have noted that the frame rate is not really consistent and uh, dips here and there which makes the overall player experience not that smooth. But on the VivoBook here at 28 watts, the overall performance is just a lot smoother throughout the entire gameplay even at its lowest graphical settings. So next up is Overwatch and here I realize the same thing is happening with Fortnite as well. So the 15 watt version is kind of having frame rate dips here and there but the 28 watt version can sustain the minimum frame rate to above 50 frames per second which makes it a very playable smooth gaming experience. And then we move on to GTA 5 because I know GTA 5 was free and a lot of you claimed the game so that's why we are testing it here. So on 15 watts version we said that the frame rate can dip down to about 21 frames per second in certain scenes. But for the 28 watt version, wow, the overall frame rate is just above 30 frames per second all of the time, which is surprisingly good. And we also tested with Genshin Impact because it is the brand new hot free game that everyone can download on any laptops that they have. Uh, 15 watt version, we noted that the frame rates is very inconsistent and it just stutters here and there. On the 28 watt version, it still happens sometimes, but a lot less, which makes this 28 watt version um, kind of a good gaming laptop if you want to play Genshin Impact at the lowest graphical settings. 
Now at this point in time, we can already draw a conclusion and we can know what's going on between the 15 watt version and also the 28 watt version. So by looking back at this screenshot right here, in IDA64 when we stress test both CPU and GPU, we can see that the 15 watt version can only sustain 100% GPU utilization, whereby the CPU is only at about 55% max. Whereas for the 28 watt version, when we do the same test, the GPU can reach 100% utilization but the CPU can reach up to about 85% in terms of utilization. Which we can draw a conclusion here by saying that the 28 watt version has a lot more headroom in terms of CPU. So if we are playing any type of CPU intensive games, then it would obviously perform much better. Now, with that said, we also tried with a few other games which the Intel Iris Xe just cannot keep up with the graphical demands, like Far Cry New Dawn. It doesn't matter if the Intel Core i7-1165 G7 is running at 15 watts or 28 watts because both of them have about the same frame rates, just that the GPU just can't handle it. And same goes to COD Modern Warfare as well because on the 28 watt version, although the frame rate is a bit higher, it is still very stuttery when I enter a game because the CPU still can't keep up. And now we have to talk about temperature. The Zenbook Flip S UX371, as said earlier, this is an ultra thin and light portable laptop with 15 watts version of the i7 1165G7. The heatsink inside here is kind of small as stated, there's just one heat pipe running through the whole chip and the heatsink is also kind of just at a corner. Whereas the VivoBook S15 S533EA, it also has a very similar cooling system but the heatsink is actually wider and the fan chamber is also slightly bigger. So I think that extra headroom there can actually wick out that extra 13 watts of heat. And in terms of the maximum temperature, the Zenbook Flip S UX371 can reach for about 82 degrees Celsius whereby the VivoBook S15 S533EA at 28 watts, it can run at about 80 degrees which is actually surprisingly good. So at the end of the day, I can say that the 15 watt version of the Intel Core i7-1165G7 and the 28 watt version, the difference here is in terms of its CPU headroom. So if you're doing anything that requires both CPU and GPU at the same time, 28 watts is going to perform better because it has more headroom in terms of its CPU part. And um, one of the things that I really want to say here is that Intel really did a good job with Tiger Lake chips this time because we can now play some older AAA titles on integrated graphics, which is just amazing. Intel really got me excited over integrated GPUs this time, but with that in mind, we are now waiting for AMD's Ryzen next gen of mobile chips to see how they are going to respond to Intel's brand new Tiger Lake because this is going to challenge them in every aspect. And before I end this video, I also want to highlight one glaring potential issue with Intel's Tiger Lake. Because in our first video, we said that the i7-1165G7 can operate all the way from 12 watts to 28 watts. And this laptop is operating at a maximum of 15 watts, whereby this one can operate at 28. This information is not stated anywhere, not even on ASUS website, not even on Intel's website which kind of creates a problem because if you are just looking at the specs at the shop and you want to pick a laptop, they both have the exact same chip but they are going to perform very differently. And this issue is not only present on ASUS part but also HP and Acer through my research. So I would suggest all of the manufacturers of laptops there to actually put the maximum operating wattage in the spec sheet so that you can avoid this kind of confusion. I think that's a really crucial piece of information for customers so that they wouldn't get confused and they are actually getting what they are paying for. Now, if you as a potential customer is looking to get a laptop with a Tiger Lake chip in it, I would highly suggest you to look out for in-depth reviews of that particular laptop that you are looking for so that you actually know how it performs in real life. And yeah, that's all we have to say about the Intel Core i7 1165G7 in 15 watts and also 28 watts version. And now it is AMD's time to respond. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. And we'll see you there.